Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about creating print on demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, I want to show you guys how you can create this design right here. I am going to show you how you can um, kind of take this from Creative Fabrica and make it your own. And so you'll see if you watch the video, how we started off with one design and created our own, you know, completely unique design. Also, if you're interested in how I did this mock-up, I do have videos on my channels about how to do different mock-ups. This was a really easy one to create on Canva. It literally all I had to do was pick a background that was wood slats. I put the spider webs on top of that. I put the glitter on top of that, added the shirt, added the pants, added the shoes, and then you put the graphic right on top of the shirt. And so that's pretty easy to do. All of these are individual elements that I can move around. And so really easy to just sort of layer that. But if you're interested in learning how you can do that, go ahead and check out my channel for um, mock-up videos. I have a couple of them. Um, and otherwise, if you're interested in learning how you can do this, go ahead and stick around. So right now I am on Creative Fabrica. And I just wanted to show you guys some of the things that are really popular right now. So as I'm filming this, I went ahead and just went to POD and I'm just looking at all the POD graphics. And right now it's sorted by popularity. So this is going to show you what is popular right now. And as you can see, I'm on the very first page and with the ex exemption of this very first design, I've got Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. So it is never too early for Halloween. That is the way things are going right now. And as I start to scroll down, I see more Halloween, I see more Halloween, I see more Halloween, 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 Halloween. So you can definitely see that Halloween is already starting. And so as I just start to scroll through here, you can start to get some different ideas of you know what's popular and all of that um, i do want to show you guys one particular design so this one right here i like it's a cool niche so this one is if you can't kill them with kindness try poison um, it's a funny one it's not trademarked it's free to use and so i want to go ahead and take this and sort of redesign it to make it my own show you guys how we can do that i'm going to open this up right here what I really like about this is it's got that cool pinup girl style that's popular right now. So what they've gone ahead and done is cross niche, you know, essentially the pinup girl with the Halloween and, you know, made a, a pretty cool design there. So I want to take this and see if there's a way that I can kind of make it my own, upgrade it like I did in a similar pinup girl example um, that I showed you guys like a week or two ago. So we can go ahead and just download this. It will download it as a zip file. You will have to open up that zip file and then just drag it into your downloads. And then from there, you can jump right over to Canva. We can open it up in Canva and start working on it. So with that, let's go ahead, just jump right over to Canva. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a custom size. I will be picking 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Um, that is the size that I use for all of my t-shirt designs. Um, specifically, it's the size that they want for merch on demand or Amazon merch on demand, but it, you know, is the most versatile and it works well with all t-shirts. I do, of course, like to optimize my designs for black, especially around Halloween. So if I'm doing stuff for Halloween, I am either optimizing for black or I am optimizing for orange, right? Um, and so maybe I'll do a design that's optimized for both as well. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is pull up the design that we just got off of Creative Fabrica. So to do that, you'll go over to the left hand side, you'll go to your uploads and you will upload from your downloads what you just got from Creative Fabrica. OK, so here is that design right here. Now you probably can't see it too well in the dark background. So just for right now, let's change. Oops. Let's change that background color to just a really dark gray. That way you can see the font right here. We can see all of the different things. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to keep it on a black background, but I'd still kind of like it to pop. And so one way that we can get around that is by adding a graphic behind this graphic that's going to be a little bit lighter in color 
but still stand out against a black background. So some of the ways you can do that is with some of the vintage sunsets or with just putting, you know, an orange circle behind her, or we can do something like putting the moon behind her. Depends which way I want to go with it, but I can put something light behind her and then still have a dark background, if that makes sense. I do want to redo all of the, the text. So I do want to make the text my own. So, I mean, with that in mind, one, I can just sort of crop out the poison there. So I'm going to do that. But then I need to get rid of the text up here. And so to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and use my editing tools and use my magic eraser. And I'm going to start erasing some of that. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to keep the bats. They might show up really well against whatever background I pick. I don't necessarily like the diamond though. So I'm going to get rid of the font. I'm going to get rid of the diamonds. See if I can get that nice and close without cutting anything off. Perfect. Um, let's go ahead, get rid of that diamond. I'm going to get rid of that diamond and then I'm going to go ahead and erase. Perfect. Looks good. Okay. So let's go ahead and back over to our page. And so now you can see that this is what I am working with. I like it so far. Now I'm thinking maybe we'll put the moon behind her. So again, anything that might look good, that's a little bit lighter, that'll make it so that it shows up even if I put it on a black shirt. So with that in mind, elements, let's just go ahead. I'm going to start with moon. So maybe a nice full moon behind her might look cool. And you can do graphics. You can do photos. Some of the photos are cool. Um, I do like some of the photos of the moon. And depending on kind of what tone you want to go with, we could use the just more basic black and white kind of grayer tone. Or if you wanted to do one that had that little like aura of color, you could do it that way too. So some of those would look, you know, really pretty cool. This one's a little bit darker in there. So any of these would look nice. What I want to do is make sure that it is big enough that it's going to cover her. And then if I hit control on my left bracket, it would send it to the background. So now you can see her showing up against that moon. And maybe I'm thinking I want the moon to be a little bit lighter. So maybe I would go with this one here because it's a little bit lighter and put that one in the back so she shows up a little bit better. I can always, again, see if there's any other ones that I like. This one I like is a little bit sharper here. Let's try this one. Something like that. This one has a little bit of a bluish tone to it. Of course, I can always lighten these up, you know, however I want. I could also go over to graphics and use a graphic of the moon as well. And so some of the graphics also look pretty good right there. So the graphic, you know, it's still looking nice. Oops. And it might actually work better because it's got more of the, um, the style of the pinup girl. So whereas in the pinup girl isn't entirely, you know, 3D shaded. It's more of that sort of two-tone style. This one might actually work a little bit better. Something like that. You can see how I can do. Move her up in there. So I'm thinking I like that one quite a bit. You can definitely play. Make sure you get the right one. This one is also cool. It's a little bit more two-tone. It doesn't have that fade around the edge. So and I can always rotate it however I want. I do want to keep it square because I want to crop it. But maybe if I do something like that. Yeah. Okay, I'm liking this one here. And I shrink it down. So I'm thinking this one. This is the one I think I'm going to go with. Sometimes you have to play with quite a few to find exactly what you want. So now that I have this, I'm just going to double click it. And I'm going to crop it up. So I want to crop it right up to the bottom of her. So now what we're getting is this sort of just look behind her. I'm also noticing that the moon is more of a nice gray tone, black and white, whereas in she, 
almost has more of a peachy look to her. Like it's an off-white, it's not a white. What I can do if I want these to really go black and white would be to go to Edit Image, Adjust, and what I can do is I can bring that saturation down on her. So that'll make her a lot more just plain black and white. So I'm gonna get rid of any of those sort of tanner tones. So now she's black and white, the moon is black and white. I can still take that moon and I can sometimes edit that image if it will let me. Let's see. Let me go to adjust here. And we'll see if I can bring that brightness up. Maybe that contrast up a bit too. So like that. So maybe something like that. So now you can see how I've pretty much got her in front of the moon. Now if I change this background color back to black, so you guys can see, now what I've got is that graphic standing out against the black background. So I hope that made sense to you. And so that's one way that we can take some of these darker color graphics that we find on Creative Fabrica put them in front of something, and now I can still put it on a dark shirt. It gives it its own look as, an, as a unique graphic, and you know, it gives me flexibility. Now I decided to go with the moon. You could do the exact same thing by going with like, oh, orange circle. Helps if I can spell orange right, but you get the idea, orange circles. And I could have done that with any of these orange kind of faded circle looks. And I could have just put an orange circle behind her and any of those might have looked good. So here's an orange gradient. If I had taken that control D and put that behind her, I could have done it that way as well too and used orange text. So there's a ton of different things. And of course I could have done that with some of the like sunset style, vintage style as well. I just decided to go with the gray scales. I think that looks pretty cool. So now let's go ahead. We're gonna add some text. Um, to make sure I've got some room, I'm gonna shrink this down and I'm gonna group it together. So I'm gonna go ahead and click anywhere outside. It's a left click outside of the image. Hold that down, drag over both so that they're grouped. I'm gonna hit group. So now I can shrink her and the moon down together. So it's as though that they're one image now. So now we're gonna add a text box. So let's hit T on the keyboard. That's gonna pull up your text box. I'm gonna be doing this in all caps and we're just gonna go ahead and write out that saying. So if you can't kill them with kindness, and then I'm gonna put try poison at the bottom. So let's go ahead and change the color here so we can see it. Make it a nice light gray there. If you can't kill them with kindness, let's go ahead, pull up a more text box. This one is going to say, try poison. Let's see if I spelled that right. Yeah, okay, good. Try poison. Make it nice and big. So it's gonna go here. This is more or less going to curve around uh, so you can see how that's gonna look. I'm gonna go ahead and make it sort of curve around the moon that way. But we gotta pick our fonts first so that we make the sizing right. And so I wanna go fonts, I want it to be easy to read, but I also wanna give it sort of a you know nice Halloween style. One of the Halloween fonts that I really like that I did get off of Creative Fabrica was one called Gloomy Mummy. I do like that one. So if I look for a gloomy mummy. I can just type that in here. See? Gloomy mummy. There's regular and there's damaged. So I like the damaged one. It gives it a little bit of a texture there, but I can do either one. So if I don't want the damaged, I can just make it like solid. But I think the damage looks good. So here's my try poison. And so you can see how that looks. And then we gotta pick a font here. The font I was gonna go here, it needs to be a little bit more narrow because I got a lot of words. This is kind of a long quote that I'm gonna go around the outside. So I need it to be big enough that I can read it. So I need it to be a little bit more narrow. The one I decided to go with was a little bit of a grungy one to go with that. So pretty simple. I put grunge to search. 
And so here are all my grunges, and you can look at some of the cool narrow grunges. I wanted something simple that would go around, and so I went with the Handelson 5. And so this one I can now go ahead and make it big enough that it is going to curve all the way around. And so this is going to be a little bit of playing with the curve and then playing with the size of the font and then playing with the curve and then playing with the size of the font to make sure that everything fits optimally. And so something, something there actually looks relatively good. I might bring that tri poison out a little bit something like that and then maybe fill this little gap here with something i'm thinking maybe putting a little like skull and crossbones for like a poison on each side just to give it a little extra so maybe i go to elements and maybe i'm gonna go ahead i had initially searched for poison just to see what would come up in terms of graphics and well there's your little skull and crossbones here here's another one so different elements that I thought might look cool with poison. I decided that this skull and crossbones here looked pretty cool. And again, I was going to do that in a nice gray color. So it would go something like this. Get it right where I want it. Make sure the size is the way I want it. Because once I've got that, I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate it and put it on the other side. So I'm going to hit that, I'm gonna hit Control D, that will duplicate it, so now it's exactly the same size. And then I'm going to move it over and put it in the same spot on the other side. So something like that. There we go. Cool. So there you go, that is a pretty fast, pretty simple design. It's a popular niche, so I've seen a lot of that. If you can't kill them with kindness, try poison tons of ways that you can go with that by the way but and it doesn't have to be halloweeny i've seen it done with a lot of just the vintage pinup girl housewife designs too but it definitely works well with halloween and witches um and so this is a cool we did sort of the black and white style but again i could do this again and do it in different tones do orange colors so i could make lots of versions of this exact same design just changing some of the fonts changing some of the colors changing the background and so you can see how we made it from the original design to this one. And this is a brand new design. I think it's better than the original. It certainly shows up better on a darker color shirt, which is going to be more likely to sell around Halloween. So I like this. I'm going to go ahead, hit share. I'm going to go down to download. It's a PNG. I'm going to need a transparent background and I'm going to hit download. And now this is ready to go. And of course we can put it on shirts. We can put it on sweatshirts. We can put it on tote bags. Um, I mean, it'll work on just about anything that you want. If I wanted to put it on a sticker, I could of course make that, um, you know, the text a little bit darker so that it would show up on a white background of a sticker. Um, but yeah, you can do anything you like with that. So get creative. It's never too early to start for Halloween. Halloween's another big holiday, much like Christmas in terms of selling shirts. A lot of people like to wear Halloween shirts. Um, funny is always good. Funny, spooky, but, you know, try to do some good cross-niching. See what is popular now. If you have any questions, drop that in the comment section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as I can. Be sure to check out my channel. I've got over 250 videos, so there's probably stuff up there that you're interested in that uh, you just haven't found yet. So go ahead and you can search for that. Um, I do have a link uh, in the description under this video for Creative Fabrica if you don't have that. It's really affordable. I use it a lot. I recommend it. But of course, it also has a ton of freebies on there. So there's lots of free graphics and fonts that you can get from Creative Fabrica without having to spend any money. And so that's nice as well. Um, that is it. I hope you guys are doing really well with your sales. And I do hope to see you guys again next week. That's it for today's video. If you found that useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.